I, I'm absolutely thrilled with both the youth and children's programs that we've got here at Genesis. And uh, when you've got that number of teenagers and you're taking them away for a weekend into an environment with hundreds of other teenagers who love God and they have a lot of fun, but there's teaching and there's worship, uh, there's no telling what God will do in their lives. So um, I, t I tell you what I want to do just now is I want to take a moment um, before I come to today's teaching to pray for them and uh, also a couple of other folks that uh, I want to mention and, and, and there might be folks on your heart. Um, one, one of our, our regular congregation, Johnny, Johnny Hor I, I murder his last name, I have no idea. Those of you who know Johnny, know Johnny, right? And those who don't, don't, but we're still going to pray for him. That good? All right, we'll leave it there. Uh, so we're going to pray for Johnny. And I'd like us to pray for the Tooker family. Some of you know them. Kerry ran our Grace Care ministry for years. And uh, Jerry, Jerry's sister passed uh, a couple of days ago from ALS. And uh, they're, the wake is today. So let's pray for that family and other needs that are on your hearts. And I do want to mention the fact, and um, I want to ask you to pray particularly today as well for Ginny Carmel. Uh, talking Grace Care, Ken and Ginny have been heading that up for several years now, doing a fantastic job. But Ginny has been very sick for a, a couple of weeks now. She's been hospitalized for over a week. And uh, she's hoping to come out sometime very soon. But let's pray for Ginny as well, could we? All right, let's just open our hearts to God and just ask the Lord. And just perhaps as you remember one or more of those names, just say, Lord, please help them. Father, thank you for who you are. You're God above all. And Lord, we lift these up to you this morning. Lord, I pray for Ginny where she is today. And I pray, Lord, that you'd breathe fresh life into her body. I pray, Lord, that, that, that everything that has been afflicting her, Lord, will be completely healed and that she will know health, as she continues to serve you with all of her heart. God, be with her today. Lord, bless her today. Let your love envelop her, I pray. And may the joy of the Lord be her strength. Lord, for Johnny, too, that he will know your healing touch. God, I pray you'd meet his need. For the family that's bereaved, Father, will you be beside them? And Lord, for our teens and for faith, we thank you for them. And God, we pray you'd continue to watch over them and work in their lives. God, we pray that, Lord, this group will continue to develop and grow spiritually and be a terrific force for you, both now and in the years to come. And Lord, there are needs on everyone's hearts here today. And I thank you for your promise that you will supply all of our needs from your riches in glory. God, minister to them, I pray. And as we turn to your word, help us to hear you. Amen. 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 So here we are, the first Sunday of the year. So there's 26 folks who are uh, away on the youth retreat. And then I'm looking around today and thinking, I guess everybody else was anxious about the weather. Because we went from being jammed this week to... Uh, Plenty of space this week. It jammed last week to plenty of space this week. So, uh, but great to have you here with us. And I guess even more people are watching online today. And I'm glad we are able to offer that for you. A number of years ago, a long time ago, I was, uh, I preached at a pastor's conference in Virginia Beach. And I was flying out of Norfolk Airport on the Saturday up to the D.C. area because I was preaching at a church uh, in Northern Virginia on Sunday. And when I got on the plane in Norfolk, we were getting all ready and the flight attendant announced, this is TWA, it shows it was a while ago, right? This is TWA flight, whatever it was, to Washington National. If Washington is not in your travel plans today, we suggest you leave the plane immediately. I couldn't help smiling at the way he put that. It's like, 
We're going to Washington. Uh, if you don't want to be there, you probably ought to leave right now. But you need to know where you're going and make sure it's the direction you want to be going in. And that's what I want to do for us as a church this morning. I want to lay out to you the direction in which we see ourselves going in the course of this year that we've just started. And I guess, in all honesty, you decide, do I want to be part of it? And if you do want to be part of it, be part of it. There was logic there somewhere, all right? <laughs> if you want to be part of it, be wholeheartedly a part of it. So we're starting with one of my favorite questions, what's next? What's next? Great, like, you know, wherever we're at now, praise God. We had a fantastic service here last Sunday, didn't we? It was an incredible end to the year. Uh, the place was jammed. We had... Uh, baby dedic or child dedication, we had, we baptized seven people. It was a fantastic way for us to end the year. But that was last Sunday. What's next? What's next? Because God's resources are never exhausted and God's plans for us are ongoing. So that's what we're going to look at here this morning. And for us as a church, I believe what's next for this year needs to come down to two simple things. Going deeper and reaching further. Going deeper in our relationship with God and reaching further with the love of God. They, they, they tell me that when, when the roots of a tree, I know nothing about this stuff, but I, I read this and I'm taking it at face value, all right? So when the, when the roots of a tree are unhealthy or undernourished, the whole tree suffers. It's the roots that matter. The foliage and the fruit will not develop like they should if the roots aren't in a good way. And of course, there's also the practical thing that roots provide an anchor for the tree as well as a means of nutrition. So here's what the Bible says about this. Colossians 2, 7. Let your roots grow down into him, that's Jesus, and draw up nourishment from him, see that you go on growing in the Lord and become strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. God intends that our, our relationship with him should be something that is developing, that is growing, that is becoming stronger. So he says, see that you keep on growing in the Lord. Ephesians 3.17 says this, I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts, living within you as you trust in him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And no, long, no, no matter how long we might have known the Lord or been on this journey, the, the, what the Bible says is let your roots go deeper. Let your roots grow deeper. Let your faith grow stronger. And, and one of the things I pray for us as a church today is that through this year, our experience will be one of going deeper. Now, I've known the Lord for over 60 years now. but I don't know the Lord. All right, some of you take that snippet and sound bite and quote it, right? He doesn't know the Lord. What I'm saying is I don't know it all. I don't know God in all his fullness. I started my relationship with Jesus over 60 years ago, but the reality is this, I'm still getting to know God better and better and more and more. It's an ongoing thing. And I want to encourage you today, don't be static and don't be content with where you are at right now, but be looking to strengthen your faith and to develop your relationship with God. Let your roots go deeper. Let me just say this first. We need to be rooted in Scripture. We need to know God's Word, not for the sake of 
you know, being able to quote a load of things, not so that we can kind of make a display of our knowledge. We need to know God's Word because here's what the Scripture says. It says the entrance of God's Word brings us life. So we need to know God's Word more and more because it is life-giving and also because it anchors us. So with that in mind, let me tell you this. Starting two weeks from today, Sunday, January the 21st, we are going to begin a whole teaching series called Transformed. And what that series is, is this. It's geared to strengthen us in seven most important areas of life. So we're going to look at invaluable healing truths about key areas that impact life's greatest joys and greatest sorrows. So we're, we're going we're gonna to look at being transformed in our spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, relational, financial, and vocational areas of our lives. And here's how it's going to work. Next Sunday, I'm going to be introducing the topic, setting things up for the Sunday after when we will begin. And then through the course of seven weeks, we will be looking at each of those topics to see what God's Word says to us about them and to see if they can actually, what ways they could help us in our lives. Through the course of those seven weeks, we will be recommencing our midweek Bible studies, which will be on the same theme. So on Monday nights on Zoom, Tuesday mornings and Wednesday nights here in person, we, we are going to be having video teaching from one of the most uh, impactful pastors in this country in the last 20 years, that is Rick Warren. And he, we are going to look at his teaching, which will be linked with what Sunday's topic was. So I preach on the topic here Sunday. Rick Warren adds a few of his ideas on whatever, whatever of those occasions works for you, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. And then when we finish the, the video teaching on those at those times, we will just break into smaller groups and we'll talk about how they apply to us. So, we have a transformed workbook that's available. Everything you'll need is in here because this, among other things, offers another element. And what this offers is you begin two weeks from today, it offers seven weeks of daily readings. So you can be following the theme. Every day's reading will be linked with the theme for the week. Are you with me still? All right. So you've got Sunday teaching on the theme, Tuesday night teaching, then conversations about the theme. We've got daily readings about it. There's space to journal for those of you that journal. And there's also in here the questions or the conversation questions for the small groups. So what I'd love for you to do is this. Start off by getting a hold of one of these. It's, it's a very nice put together workbook. And we've got, we bought a lot of them, anticipating a lot of you are wanna, gonna wanna get involved. And they are available. Now, I'd love to give them away, but they cost 15 bucks each. So here's what we're gonna do. We are, they are out there. There's a table just outside the barn doors. If you'd like to get one, I, I wanna encourage you to buy them. They're $15. I'd like to encourage you to buy them soon. Don't say I've got a couple of weeks yet. Um, if today works, do today. Because the thing is, if we sell out, I want to be able to reorder and have some more back by the time we actually start the series. Uh, we don't have facilities for credit debit cards here, but if you've got a check or good old money, that would work really well, all right? So, so what we're going to do is, is, here's a practical way to help us grow stronger and go deeper. And that is we're going to work through the Transform series in the course of the next couple of months. Going deeper. So going deeper means being rooted in what the Bible says about a lot of practical aspects of life. Here's what Ephesians 4.14 says that will do for us. Then we will no longer be like children forever changing our minds about what we believe because someone has told us something different or has cleverly lied to us and made the lies sound like the truth. How do you make sure you don't get fooled? 
be very aware of what the Bible says. So that's what we're going to do there. So back to my great expertise about trees. I remember uh, visiting San Francisco. When I was over here in the 80s, and uh, I said I flew from Norfolk to Washington. Some of you say, why didn't you drive that? Well, here's the deal. There was a fantastic arrangement with TWA back then, and it lasted for years through the 80s. If you flew transatlantic with them, you could have five flight vouchers that cost you $30 each for domestic flights. So I was, gonna, I was asked if I'd preach in the Bay Area in San Francisco. So I flew from D.C. then, after the Sunday, I flew to the West Coast. It cost me 30 bucks. But I flew into the Bay Area, and, and I was fascinated by it, loved that whole area. And, and there, was a, there was a guy who kind of took me on a tour around the area. And I want to tell you, I saw giant redwoods for the very first time. Darn, they're impressive. Up to 350 feet tall. And yet the redwoods have a root system that's quite different because their roots only go about 12 feet under the ground. So how the heck do the giant redwoods remain standing through the strongest of storms when they haven't got that strong an anchor? Well, let me tell you this. They do have a strong anchor, and here's how it works. Their roots don't go right down. They go out. And you know what happens when they go out? They intertwine with the roots of other trees. So their stability and security comes from the fact that they are well connected with all the others. And I just want to remind you that one of the things that helps us to grow strong and stand as believers is being well connected with other believers. And, and I want to encourage you that this year is a year where you recognize that and relish it. And uh, if you are an occasional visitor to us, I want to encourage you, um, get connected for your own sake. Get connected for your sake. It takes a while. But there's a couple of practical ways to get connected. One is if you join our midweek teachings, you're going to spend some time of it in a smaller group and you'll get to know some folks in the group. Another way you get connected is to find a way to get involved and to serve. Serving is a key way to do that. And there are a multitude of ways. I was fascinated to learn the other day that our Grace Care community outreaches involve something like 100 folks in the various outreaches that we do with Grace Care. A hundred. And, but the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Getting involved with Grace Care, I've seen over and over and over again, people have actually got connected to each other. And folks who didn't seem to know very many people and who came and went now become a part of it. There are folks who've joined the band, and joining the band has become a key way in which they've actually got connected and got to know others. And when you're connected you get stronger. There are folks who are newish to our church and have volunteered to serve and they've got involved in our welcome team. And when you're in, you know, when you're in something that ends with team, you get connected to other people. So if you've been sitting on the edges of things, I want to encourage you to step forward this year and to get connected. There's a significant verse in 1 John 2, 19. And John describes some people and says this, they went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. And if you don't belong, you come and go. But when you belong, you get committed. And you really belong when you're a functioning part. 1, 1 Corinthians 12, 27. Now here's what I am trying to say. All of you together are the one body of Christ, and each one of you is a separate a necessary part of it. You become part when you get involved. This year, make a year of going deeper. 
Take advantage of everything we are able to offer to you, which will enable you to grow stronger in your relationship with the Lord and strengthen your ties with others, with the mission of the church by getting involved in volunteering. What's next for you? What's next? Or else Sunday goes into Sunday, goes into Sunday, goes into Sunday, and guess what? It's the last Sunday of 2024. And hopefully it was a good year. But did you grow as you could have grown in your relationship with the Lord? What's next is such an important question. What, one of the things um, I guess I got known for to some degree down in the Dominican Republic is, you, you know, we've been involved in there for a number of years now and been able to get alongside them in a number of projects. And a few years back, the, the church school was absolutely busting at the seams. And you remember, we, we took an offering and we bought that little house next door. And then we had a team that went down and gutted the house and made it into more classrooms. And when I visited the DR just after that had happened, we had a great walk around. Freddie showed me what, what had been done and how that was working. I said, that's great, Pastor Freddie. Now, what's next? What's next? And then we started chatting, and what we did next was we bought the house next door to that. And instead of renovating that, I mean, this is over the period of several years, well, instead of renovating that house, we knocked down both houses. And as many of you will know, we actually built then a, new, a beautiful new big church for them on the property, and then the old church they use exclusively for the school. And I was down there, we had a missions team down there in October of 2019, no, November it would be, I guess, 2019, and we had a missions team down there, and we had a dedication service for the new church. And it was a wonderful evening. The place was packed. It was great to see them in this beautiful building and to know they had far more space for the kids. And that evening after the service was over, we were about to leave, and Freddie said, Pastor Roger, I know what you're going to say. I said, what am I going to say? He said, you're going to say, what's next? Amen. And I said, yeah, absolutely, Freddie. You got it. You've got it. There's always got to be, there's always got to be a next. And for us here as a church, there's got to be a next. So the first part of our what's next for this year is this. Let's go deeper. But the second part of our what's next is reaching further. The first chapter of Mark's gospel records a, just one very busy day early in Jesus' ministry. So he preached in the synagogue and he healed somebody there. He went to Peter's house where his mother-in-law was sick and he healed the mother-in-law. And that evening, a lot of people came over to her house. There was a crowd of people outside of the house who were sick and, and Jesus healed them. The next morning, he got up early and went out alone to pray and his disciples came looking for him. And, and it says this in Mark 1, 37. When they found him, they said, hey, everybody's looking for you. Everyone's looking for you. Let's, let's go and let's keep doing this. And Jesus' response is very interesting in the next verse. But Jesus replied, we must go on to other towns as well. And I will preach to them too. That is why I came. Hey, everything's good here, Lord. Let's keep doing it. And Jesus said, no, no, let's reach a little further. Let's reach a little further. Our primary responsibility as a church is not to those who are found, but to those who are lost. I'll say that again, because some of you might not have fully grasped it and some of you might not agree with it, but feel free to disagree. I'm telling you where we're going, right? I told you, I, I put on social media, this is more of kind of a family chat today than a sermon, right? That's why I'm, I, I, I'm rocking my Mr. Rogers look, okay? <laughs> so, right, so. Um, <laughs> our primary responsibility is not to those who are found, but to those who are lost. Mark 2.17, who needs a doctor, the healthy or the sick? 
Good question. I'm here inviting the sin sick, not the spiritually fit. You see, the danger is this. The natural gravitational pull of every church is inward. It's inward. Le left to itself, every church will end up looking inwards, taking care of inwards, focusing totally on those that are in the church. That's the way it goes, and that's often the way churches uh, really shape up, and that's the direction that they go in. But God's heart is quite different from that. And the best thing we can do as a church is to be about what Jesus said we should be about. And I love the fact that our Sunday services become a huge part of our outreach. You invite them. We do our utmost to make sure that it is a life-giving experience here. And God does the rest. You invite we do our bit. God does what we could never do. Here's, here's the thing. Not, just, not looking particularly at this morning, but we've been getting more and more full on Sunday mornings. And uh, that's a wonderful thing. And what I've noticed uh, in the course of last year is a lot of those who have been joining us have been younger couples with family, single parents with children. So here's a couple of things we're looking to do this year. Number one, really freshen up our children's areas so they get the best. You okay with that? Hey, it was 10 years ago we moved into this building and we set everything up. So we want to set up our children's areas to maximize the space we have there and to maximize the experience of the children for two reasons. As I was talking to some folks before service, number one, this is an evil world. And more than ever, our kids need to have a solid foundation built into that. So our kids are a priority. The second reason of prioritizing our kids' areas is, is this. I'm kind of out of touch with what you do with grandchildren now because I'm in the great-grandchildren area. And, 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 but here's the thing. When I was dealing with grandchildren, McDonald's was one of the favorite spots. And one of my grandchildren, not naming any names, but who loved the, his food, would not even finish his meal at McDonald's because he wanted to go to the play area. He loved being at McDonald's. I didn't want to go to McDonald's. You say, hey, Rog, where do you want to go for lunch today? I, McDonald's is not on my radar. I'm sorry. No disrespect. I know we got at least one person here who works for that. But no disrespect. It's just, you know, it's just, it's just you know, I, 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 I don't, I'm not interested in McDonald's. But when I have my grandkids... Where do you want to go? McDonald's. Great, let's go to McDonald's. I went because they wanted to go. And I tell you this, I'm not saying it's good, but in 2024, in so many households, what the kids want is what goes. Yeah. Right? I was raised differently. <laughs> I wasn't given a vote. <laughs> right? Yeah. We're going here. Okay. Here's your dinner. It was, it was like, right? It was like, you know, I was... I wasn't given to say, but, but life's different, and, and I accept things change. Let me tell you this. Sometimes I've talked to parents here who were there that Sunday because the kids wanted to be here. I wasn't going to come today, but she said, can I go to church, can I go to church, can I go to church? So we need to make sure our kids' area and our kids' ministry, we've got fantastic volunteers that our kids' areas are the most enjoyable experience possible for the children, for the kids' sakes and for the sake of the fact that kids have a lot of influence on the parents too. Are you with me so far? Okay, now let me, let me just state what some of you have noticed already. We have put extra seats in here. They're slightly different. They're almost the same color, but we have beefed up our seating in here so that that should help us for a while. So we've got 40 extra chairs in here now for Sunday morning services. But the time will come, 
probably sometime this year, brace yourselves, when those 40 chairs won't be enough. And then there comes a point where this isn't really safe and it isn't. In 2024, people don't necessarily want to sit shoulder to shoulder to shoulder, much as we love each other, right? So there will come a point when we anticipate going back to two services on a Sunday morning. Yes. And uh, now I know there are folks who say, oh, no, don't do that, don't do that, because then we don't know everybody. You don't know everybody now. <laughs> I mean, you don't. I, you, you don't. You, you really don't. And uh, I anticipate we will be doing that and moving back to that. And some of you say, well, do, do we really need to do that? Listen. I'm going to ask you a question. Have we reached all the people God wants us to reach? No. Oh, you knew that one, right? <laughs> no, we haven't. Are we going to be content to say we've got 99 sheep here in the fold? No. no. It's all about the one that's out there and is still lost. So we'll do whatever we've got to do to make sure we've got the space for you to keep inviting, keep talking, keep bringing, and people to keep coming to Jesus. One of the complications of that is we're going to need to double up on every area of volunteers if we do go back to two services. So please, bearing in mind what I said earlier, be aware and be prepared. But here's the thing. Growth leads to growth. It's kind of like a momentum develops. And momentum stops when we settle. And when momentum stops, we settle and decay sets in. It begins to go rotten. So we need to continue to grow. So that's what we're anticipating doing on Sundays. And then when it comes to reaching further, We'll be able to reach more people if we rearrange our Sundays. We'll be able to reach more people and plan to in a number of ways. Our community outreaches are absolutely rocking, and there are plans for developments in several of those areas through Grace Care. We are, we are actually serving so many people through the different ministries of Grace Care every week. And it's been a blessing in recent months to meet a number of folks from our Grace Care outreaches who've got to know us there and who've come to join us on a Sunday. That's absolutely terrific. See, people don't care how much you know till they know how much you care. And when they know you care, they're interested in what you've got to say. So that's been an incredible thing. And then when it comes to reaching further, let's chat about our connections in San Marcos in the Dominican Republic. I was in the DR in, in August with George Leva, and George and I were down there just for about a day and a half to meet with Freddie, see what was what. And in the course of our time with Freddie, we visited a lady who lives just down the block from the church, for those of you who are familiar with San Marcos. And we went to see her, and we went to see where she was living. And uh, I think we probably got a, a, we got a couple of photographs there that I'd, I'd like you to see. This is Olga, and this is her house. Take a look. That's the side of the house. See the condition? That's her bathroom. Now, When, when we visited Olga and saw her house, aware of the fact that we've had missions teams that have rebuilt homes for folks down there before, George and I were talking. I said, George, we've got to do this for her. That was August. We already had a team going in November, and they, they built the, the, the new church there in San Marcos. Their schedule was already full. But I said to George, we can't wait till November of next year 
to take care of Olga. She lives there with just her and her daughter. Her son was killed in a motorcycle accident in August. I said, George, we gotta do something sooner. So here's what we are anticipating. This year, we will be sending a missions team to the DR in November, as we always do. But we are looking to send a missions team also at the end of April. And the end of April team, going April 28th till May 4th, will be totally a construction team. All the team will be doing is construction. Now, don't get me wrong here. Some of you, some of you folks who might be kind of, well, whatever, we won't go into this. But, but this is probably going to be a men's trip. All right? And all you ladies are, I can do what any man can do. So God bless you, you know. But we're looking for tradesmen. We're looking for guys who are really handy. And can you rebuild a house or build a house? Because that's got to be all knocked down. Can you build a house in six days? Yes, you can. Our guys have done that before. So, so there will be an information meeting after service next Sunday. And for anyone and everyone who is interested in going down to build a house. For... I love this church. I love this church. Because this is what we do. This is what we do. It's not all about us. It's about stretching ourselves to reach further. So there will be the regular team going down to the DR November 10th to 16th. But in, in April, at the end of April, we're looking for a team to go down and give Olga something way better than what she's got there just now. So that's one thing we're going to do to reach further. There's, there's, a, there's also a, a, an interesting development in the DR, and that is that I've been invited in June to speak at a pastor's conference for all the pastors from the Caribbean, from the denomination that Pastor Freddie's a part of. And they're all coming together in the Dominican at the end of June for a conference, and Freddie asked me if I'd go down and if I would speak to them. And uh, I, I love that opening and opportunity because I can't knock a nail in straight. You don't need me near a construction team, all right? But there's some things I can do. And I've got a few years of experience in pastoring. So if I can share with these pastors and, and encourage them, then that's going to be a very positive thing. So that's, that's some advance there. Let, let me just quickly mention a couple of other things. Uh, I talked to Mike Carolil from the 180 Center in New Haven that helps people to, uh, to really turn their lives around with a rehab program and with outreaches to the homeless in the community. And they just got clearance a day or two ago from the city to go forward in the next phase of developing the second part of their building, which will actually provide accommodation for 16 people to live there. So they take in 16 people and offer them a place to live. And they're all ready to go. And what I hear is within the next couple of weeks, we're going to be uh, throwing it out there and saying, if you've got some time at a weekend and can go up there and do some of the stuff, that would be good. They're looking at, I think, sheet rocking and finishing the, net, the, the rooms that will be out back. And then they've got to get a sprinkler system. They've got to get a HVAC system. Which are, which are large items, of course, but then they're going to be good to go. So um, I'm just happy to be able to help them as they extend their ministry. Throughout the course of the last 12 months, their center has been open every night for the homeless to come in and spend the night there. They just get a kind of a, a blanket thing and they lay on the floor. They're just happy to be safe and dry and warm. And this will be the next level that they are now going to. And, and then talking about extending our outreach where supporting others is concerned, I've got to know a couple 
he's, Gianni is Italian, Italian. And Angela is actually from my part of England. And they met in Bible college a number of years ago and went from Bible college to Austria and started church planting there. And we've got a video clip from this couple that I'd like you to see. Thank you. Hello, Genesis Church. Happy New Year to you. Thank you, Pastor Roger, for this opportunity to share briefly. Our name is Angela and Gianni Gaeta. This surname, we get it because we, I am from the south of Italy and we have been married for 37 years and almost all of that time being missionaries here in Austria. I'm sure many of you have heard of Austria. You've mm. probably visited our capital city here in Vienna where, where we live. And maybe you're asking yourself, Austria, a mission field. You know Austria for its beauty, for its history, mm -hmm. for the music and the art, so many beautiful things. And yet, under the surface, yeah. we live in a nation and we're asking you to join us and partner with us to reach a nation that has deep, deep spiritual need. Yes. There are very few Christians here. Mm and very few churches that share Jesus to people where people can attend. And so that's why we've lived here, served Jesus here, and are gonna continue to do that, doing three main three things. Leading people to a relevant living faith in Jesus, mm. and having to plant churches so that they have a spiritual community. Yeah. The other thing we do, we have to train men and women to become pastors and leaders yep. to look after these churches. Mm -hmm. We don't have a Bible school in the nation, but we have our own leadership academy from Life Church. And then Impact Europe is known for influencing society. We see local church as the first step towards bringing light and salt and life into every area of society. We are so pleased that you're gonna join with us in this venture. And you know, when people think about Europe, when people think about Austria, they don't think as a place to be, to go as a missionary. But actually what we have discovered, as already Angela said, the need is so great. And we need people like you who will join with us knowing and thinking that this nation, this continent is not just a nice place to go for a holiday, but it's actually a place where, that we need to reach with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we look forward to getting to know you better. Yeah. We look forward to partnering with you. If you're a praying person, we'd love to be sending through prayer points, our newsletter every, every other month. Mm. We're going to be yeah, finding ways that we can keep build a partnership that is living and relevant and, and fruitful. So we say we wish you a great 2024 Absolutely. and together yeah, we're going to impact Europe. Yes. Be blessed at Genesis Church today. Bye-bye. Hello. Okay. That's Angela and Pianini and uh, basically they, they, you know, we connected and we started talking and they outlined to me their plan for church planting over the next 10 years in what is the most underchurched nation in Europe. Who would have thought, right? Years ago, they always referred to Africa as, as, as being the, a dark nation. But the reality is Europe is dark spiritually. And they're right there in the heart of it. And so um, we chatted several times and I said, look, what, what are you looking for? And they said, well, could you help us to support church planters we got ready to go. So I said, yes, of course, on your behalf. And because uh, <laughs> I know you and you wouldn't be sitting here in Genesis if you didn't have the same kind of heart as I've got. I'm, you know, that's it. So here's what we're going to do really simply is every month, you know, on, on, on the first Sunday of the month, which happens to be today, we, we, we invite you to give 
for the support of the ministries and missions that we support. And quite simply, we're going to be sending them a couple of hundred dollars every month. So we're extending our own missions budget as a first step towards supporting them in their church planting ventures in Austria. So we're adding them to the ministries we already support through our monthly missions offering. And I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, they made the video so you could see them, hear from them, and uh, they have been doing a fantastic job. But here's where they're at. They say, well, we're 60 now. We've got to double our efforts because who knows how much time we've got. And so rather than phasing out, they're really gearing up. And we look forward to being able to partner with them and to help them and support them in their church planting. And who knows, there may be scope for a missions team to go to Austria at some point. I'll go. <laughs> Despite what she says, I've never been to Austria or visited Vienna. So, hey, I'll go. Uh, but who knows? Who knows where it's going to be? But that will be a, a, a totally different area that we can be a part in supporting what God is doing. Go deeper, reach further. Covered a lot of territory this morning. But that's where I want us to be as a church. We can't stay still. In our personal lives, we need to get stronger in our faith. But in our mission as a church, we need to push ourselves a little further and be ready to reach more people in different ways. Let me finish by quoting this particular scripture in 2 Corinthians 8.5. Here's what Paul says about some believers. He says, they exceeded our expectations. And notice the next bit. They gave themselves first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. And what I'm just encouraging you to do this morning as we start this new year is to give yourselves afresh to the Lord. Say, God, I really want to know you better in this year. And then I want to encourage you also to commit yourself to our vision and to our mission and say, I want to be a part of seeking and saving those that are lost. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today for the fact that you love us, you care for us, and you've watched over us and brought us to this point in our lives. And Lord, as we move into this new year, God, I pray that it will be a year in which our faith will become stronger. Our knowledge of you will increase. Our relationship with you get better. And God, will you help us to reach even more people who desperately need you. God, guide our footsteps, I pray, and continue to use us for your glory. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and sing with the band, can we?